Hi everybody, my name is Nicholas and welcome in this overview of the Motion Machine environment. So Motion Machine is a project that we developed here at the New Media Art Institute of Creative Technologies and it's actually an open source project. So if you go on github.com slash newmediaart slash motion machine, you can download the source code which enables pretty much everything I'm going to talk about. I'm going to put the link in the description of this video. So, I said environment because Motion Machine is not a one-shot application. It's actually a set of APIs, so it's, um, it enables uh, the manipulation of motion capture data and the extraction of motion features. And it sits on the top of Open Frameworks. So, if you don't know about Open Frameworks, it's a visualization environment. So, we leverage everything that Open Frameworks is able to do in terms of visualization, and we bring, on the top of this, we bring the additional uh, components for uh, motion capture data processing. So here I'm going to use a very typical workflow that you can use for uh, processing your motion data. And the workflow here is actually uh, exploring some dense database. So I'm going to start with the basic idea of using uh, motion capture files. So the, the view that we have here, the skeleton that you see, comes from a C3D file that uh, you can actually drop onto the window. And uh, Motion Machine is going to read C3D, BVH, flat files, so like pure text, uh, text files with uh, motion capture data in it, and a couple of other um, very typical mocap formats. And then from there, you see that you have actually a 3D view that is available. So I'm going to switch to 3D view here. And this 3D view, you can observe your data. So I can go around my skeleton. I can start the playing of my uh, of my motion capture uh, file. So you see here the clap, and then uh, the dancer start moving. And all along this, I can actually move around, uh, zoom, change my my uh, my viewing angle. So this gives uh, a very first. Um, perspective on the data that you actually observe. You can, of course, pause the playing. You can come back at the beginning. And you can also what we call scrub. So you can go around and scrub your uh, your file with the mouse. So obviously, the 3D view is a really good first start when you want to see exactly what your motion capture file is about. But motion is a lot about representation, so uh, the idea, the philosophy behind Motion Machine is to give very quick and easy access to motion features. So there are a lot of things now around that have been developed to express motion, to represent motion in different ways. And we really wanted to use Motion Machine as an integration environment. So you can develop some custom features, like Motion Machine itself comes with quite a bunch of motion features that you can already use and explore. As you can see here, we have sort of a list of things uh, that Motion Machine is able to compute on this file. And that's when we're going to talk about that, that we're going to use the 2D view. So as I'm going to here, for example, activate body center of mass, which is one of the features that comes with Motion Machine, you see that you're going to bring a 2D layer on the top of the, of the 3D scene. And as I'm playing this file, it's synchronized between the 3D view and the 2D uh, playback of these features. So I can know exactly what my posture give in terms of feature extraction or what my gesture give in terms of feature extraction. So we also see uh, from the 3D view here that the feature, like the body center of mass feature, has brought some extra 3D components on it. So you see, for example, if I play here, that I have some um, some spheres added to the skeleton. So these spheres represent actually some properties of the body center of mass. They represent the center of mass of the body, the projection of the center of mass on the body on the ground, the support, what they call the support base. So how the skeleton, as you can see here, how the skeleton is actually uh, touching the ground and a whole bunch of these kind of features. So this is very interesting because some things make sense in the 3D, some things make sense in the 2D. And so we didn't want to just limit it. So you can actually drive the 3D and the 2D views from the features. And in this case, in this workflow that I'm showing, there are some uh, features that are displayed. So I've just activated here uh, the body center of mass 
I have actually what's called the balance. So balance is a, a computation of the overall balance of the body. I have here the frequency of the head uh, motions. I have the Müller feature. So Müller is very popular in describing uh, the body posture in a relational way. So we have implemented all the Müller features. I have also the angle between the joints. I have what's called the solicitation of the joints. This is an ergonomics uh, theory about uh, joint solicitation that has been integrated. I have the overall solicitation of the whole body, which comes from the joint solicitation. I have something called here the spherness, which is how much your body looks like a sphere. It's, a, it's something very useful in ergonomics as well. And I have the weighted effort, so it's a computation of the effort, uh, like the power of the, of the motion that is actually going on. So you see, motion machine is really this, this integration environment. So in this case, I'm going to just pick a few. I'm going to pick, for example, the spherness and let's say the body center of mass. So I bring this, this custom 2D view of the two features that I'm interested in. And from there, so you see, you can, you can again observe, you can zoom in. I didn't show that yet. You can zoom in on the features and play only the part that you're interested in. So the last bit of interaction I want to show in this video is that once you are familiar with the 3D view and how to rotate around your skeleton to observe your, your gestures, once you're familiar with the 2D view, so once you can display the, the data coming out of your features, you want maybe to annotate, you want to just label something inside this data set. And so the third layer of motion machine is actually an annotation layer. So if I zoom in, let's say I have a sort of, sort of an interest point here, I zoom in and then I see, okay, this posture is really something I want to name, I want to label. I move to the annotation layer and I can annotate, I can create a label, but I'm going to give it a name here, let's say posture one. I can also move it. So this is a true annotation layer. From this, you can actually ex export the annotation in the lab uh, format. Lab is a very popular format for annotations. And you can, of course, import annotation uh, information inside the machine. So thanks for watching. This is the first overview of what Motion Machine is able to do. And we're going to come next with some more advanced tutorials on how to use the different features and then how to use the different APIs.